Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Zantanetti. On today's Bible Nugget, we're looking into Revelations chapter 13, verse 7 through 9. And it says, And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life slain before the foundation of the world. Now, today I want to talk about the importance of having an ear to hear God. Uh, you know, without a good ear, you cannot hear clearly. And being a musician so long, this is the most important part of playing. Now, there is a young lady out there who actually feels vibration from instruments, and she's an excellent musician and plays multiple instruments. But even then, though she cannot hear with the natural ear, she can feel and hear the vibrations with her, the ear of her body. How about that one, huh? <laughs> so uh, we have to be careful. Now, to have a good ear means that you have to understand what's being said. And actually, what's interesting about the ear is that the sound that goes into the ear is translated into words and is given to the brain. And the brain, of course, takes those words. And you can actually see words, right, in your mind and see a picture of the words. But having an ear is important because Jesus actually said, he that hath an ear, hear. Now, when he was here, he said, he that hath an ear, hear. When he left and the Spirit came, he said, he that hath an ear, hear what the, to, what the Spirit is saying. You know, the thing about, about ears that we listen to things on a daily basis, and what happens is that we, I, we either listen to it and obey it, or we reject it. You know, the wisest man in the world tells us that we should pay attention to the words of God. If a wise person is too busy, what happens is this. It says, when a wise person is busies themselves with many matters, then their wisdom becomes confused. So basically what it's saying is that when we put all the matters of this world before this, the word of God, because remember, everything comes from the word of God, we become confused. The world today is is moving away very much from the Word of God as it was even in the ancient days. Nothing is really different. We've had uh, the teachers, the philosophers uh, of the past still speaking today because we're studying their books. And watch this, because we're studying it and we're giving it to our children. <clears throat> uh, this is way in the background compared to the philosophers, you know, of, of the past. And so the ancient world philosophers began to teach their way of thinking. And today we're taking the, those same words, those same ideologies and philosophies, and we're applying it to our lives today. Folks, that is very dangerous. So the ideologies, the philosophies of religion and the, and the theories and all kinds of systems of knowledge has taken over our universities. I remember when they said that um, that Harvard was a Christian-based uh, college. We still have a few Christian-based colleges, but not too much anymore. They've given way to their own philosophies. But watch this. The Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 4, says, Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith. So he says, keep away from that. And in, and in Titus chapter 3, verse 9, he says, but avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. Now, there was a lot of talk about the law and how to interpret it, and they moved so far away from it that Paul said, don't listen to that. Those strivings actually destroy you. Remember the Tower of Babel? Well, it tells us in Genesis chapter 11, verse 4, and they said, go to, in other words, to the city, and let us build us a city, or go to a place, and let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach into the heavens, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad the, the face of the earth, or the whole earth. So here we see that Babel actually means a confusion of tongues, a confusion of words, and even so, God went down. He says, let us go down and confuse their language, confuse their words so that they don't understand one another. 
because otherwise they become so powerful if they're unified. The war of Satan against the church is to destroy her ability to, to watch this, to listen to the voice of reason from scripture, which is the voice of God. Forever he has been trying to change the veracity of God's word. He told Eve, did God really say? Putting doubt in her mind. And so we know because of this, the deception of the enemy was able to be injected. And we know that the world has fallen because of deception. So when you're listening to the voice of God, and I hear too many Christians saying, I, I heard God, I hear God, I hear, I said, boy, you hear God a lot. And a lot of the things that comes out of their mouth is foolishness. I can't believe the things that come out of Christians' mouths and they say that the Lord said. It's an abomination almost. You know, actually it is because if you lie against the word, it's an abomination. But the word of God is clear. If you study the word of God line upon line, precept upon precept, God's voice is clear in this book. I'm going to say that again. God's voice is clear in this book. There's only one interpretation to scripture, not many. So when you find and learn the interpretation of a verse or a context of scripture, there you will find the voice of God clearly speaking to you. I tell you, I have avoided many atrocities and, and hurts in my life because of just listening to the word of God. Oh, I've made my mistakes. And even then the word of God speaks and helps me to understand where I made my mistakes so I do not repeat it. And so the war of the enemy against the church is to try to distort the truth. This is what Paul said. He said, we do not distort the truth. The God of this world, Satan, the system of this world, has blinded the minds of unbelievers or the perception of unbelievers. Why? So that they cannot see the light of the gospel, so that they cannot see the truth of the gospel. And so it's important for us to understand this. Let's talk about the ordination of the priesthood in the Old Testament Adon and his sons. It says this in the word of God. It says, Then thou shalt kill the ram and take his blood and put it upon the tip of the right ear of Aaron and upon the tip of his right, uh, and the tip of the right ear of his sons and upon the thumb of the right hand and upon the great toe of their right foot and sprinkle the blood upon the altar round about it. Do you understand what he's saying here? Number one, the first most important thing was the ear. There are three parts to the ear. There's the outer part, the middle part, and the inner part. The outer part, the spiritual part of the outer part of the ear listens to the world. The inner part will be very careful with the middle part because that can cause confusion. But the inner place is where the spirit of God speaks to the heart. And let me tell you something about the word of God, because we understand that it was given to, to the sons of Aaron, as well as the high priest, to anoint his ear so that he can hear the voice of God. Anoint the thumb and the toe. You know that the thumb and the toe is the strongest finger and the toe on the foot? Yes, it is. You can do push-ups on your, on, your, on your thumbs. Don't try it. If you don't have enough done it, you might, your thumb might go backward. <laughs> but people, people who have done it can do push-ups with their thumbs. And so it is important that the ear is tuned to the word of God, to the voice of God in order for us to understand. The wisest man in the world, King Solomon said this, and I love it in Proverbs chapter 420, I've always held this scripture dear to my heart. My son, attend to my words, incline your ear. And now, you know, it's interesting that when I looked at, at this particular verse of scripture in the Hebrew, you know, the word here, uh, for um, inclined, my word is there, there. Watch this. There are five letters, very simple, and it represents five pictures. It represents the shepherd's staff of the master who leads us to the door of the house of the head, which is God, and his strong hand. So it's saying that the word of God, the bar, teaches us the way of God so that we will be led through the right door. Have you ever gone through the wrong door? I've gone through the wrong door. Have you ever gone through the wrong door? Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've all gone through the wrong door. Do you know why we go through the wrong door? Because we're not listening. Jesus said, I am the door. 
So when you're listening to his word and you're listening to what he has to say, he will always lead you to the door that is correct. Now watch this. He says, pay attention, incline your ear to my words. Do not let them out of the midst of your leb, the heart. Don't let it out of the midst of your heart. For they are life unto those that find them and medicine, health to their whole body. Leb is the heart and it is the lament and the bet, meaning this. The lament is where the master teacher gives us his wisdom and his word and the heart is the house. Now, I want to share with you uh, three words, three letters concerning the ear, which is ozen. That is the, that is the, uh, the Hebrew word for ear. So let me give you this real quick. Let me first go here. And it's interesting that the word ozen actually means a matok, a matok or a matok. The picture is that of an agricultural cutting implement, such as as, as such as, as as a matok. And watch this. The words, the Hebrew words of ozen is a seed and a matok, meaning that a matok is very sharp. And so the word of God, very sharp, as Bible tells us in Hebrew chapter 4, verse 12, that the word of God is alive, it is active, sharper than any double-edged sword, piercing, piercing even to the dividing of soul, of spirit and soul, or soul and spirit, and bone and marrow. It is a divider. It pierces. When Peter preached the first sermon on the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost, it says that they were pricked to the heart. The matot of the word of God hit, and it pricked their hearts to the point that they came and said, what must we do to be saved? And Peter told them what to do. Repent. Be baptized. So here, the Madoc represents a sharp tool. Now here, Ozen. Ozen is an interesting word because it speaks about broadness, the broadness of the ear. It speaks about an audience, advertisement, and hearing. Now here we go. Here we go. Here we go. The three letters that make up Ozen is the Aleph, the Zayin, and the nun. Let me just give you quick what that means. The aleph is actually the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which represents not only God and his name, but it represents him as a mighty one. But yet it is silent. You don't say aleph. It's just silent. Like the word ozen or uzen or azen actually is the first letter and you don't hear it. It's like aleph, azon, azen. So watch this now. It is a silent letter. And it's interesting because this silent letter has a vav in between, which represents faith. And do you know, I spend more time in silence praying than I do asking things of God because I want to hear his voice and I want to hear what he has to say in his word. Oh, I do speak to God, but I'm specific about what I, what I say because I'm specific in what I hear. And so the Aleph is a silent letter. And the meaning of the Aleph is summed up in, in, in these words. God, unity. God in unity with man. God in silence. God giving us the way of his word. Now the next letter is the Izin, or the Zain, excuse me. We have Aleph and Zain. Zain carries the idea of defense and protection because it is a sword. Where the first letter represents an ox, this second letter represents a sword. And the sword of Zayin is to arm yourself as with a weapon. And it speaks about having peace and protection and defense against those who try to destroy that peace. And I see a lot of Christians walking around that don't have peace because they don't listen to God's word. Now, what's interesting about the last letter, the Nun, represents God sitting on the throne, but also represents man. Man must bow themselves because the noon is a bowed letter and it represents a fish, it represents man, but it represents as God sitting on the throne. He is the king of all men and all of creation and we must bow to him. So to say, watch this, Ozen is the ear, we must bow the ear. You ever heard, you ever seen anybody do this with their ear where they're listening and they go like this? They cup their ear. 
And a lot of singers, even though in a concert they have monitors, you know what they do? They cup their ear or they put their hand over their ear to hear their voice going into their ear so that they can sing correctly. Can you imagine that? In the midst of all that noise, you can hear your voice if you just bend your ear toward your mouth. Now, here it is. This is interesting I'm gonna because I'm, it's too much to go into right now. But what's interesting is about the 613 commandments in the Word of God in the Old Testament. One lady actually came out with a hundred, uh, excuse me, 1,050 commandments of the New Testament. Wow, look them up. But the 613 laws of the, of the Old Testament is genius on God's part. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, first verse, and we know that the world, the Bible says that the world became uh, uh, confused, it was waste, and the Spirit of the Lord was moving upon the face of the deep, and God said, let there be light. And then he says, and he saw that the light was good. Do you know that that, that verse, the third verse, the light was good, and the fourth verse, that God separated the light from the night, or the day from the night. Do you know that that term right there, when you take all those Hebrew letters together, that God differentiated the day from the night, and you add them up, it comes up to 613. That even, even in the very beginning of Genesis where the Bible says that God saw that the light was good, he was showing us his law right here. This is the light of the body, the light of the mind. And when we hear his word, light enters into us. Light enters into the mind so that we can understand the way of God. In Genesis, he places 613 within the light to separate it from the darkness. This is the battle. This is the war that Satan brings against the saints of God. If he can get us confused, we will not go toward the light. If he can, if he can, watch this, invent ways to attack us in our life so that we do not obey the word of God, we will live in darkness. The Bible says if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another right here. The reason that the church is losing the battle or a large part of the church is because it's not listening to the voice of the Spirit that Jesus said, he that hath an ear. He is not talking about a physical ear. Now, here's the best part. A person can be deaf. And yet, through sign language, words are expressed. And they cry. They feel they get saved. Think about this. They can't hear with the natural ear, but with the spirit ear, the heart, they are able to comprehend what's being said and receive Jesus as Lord and feel the power of the Spirit of God in their heart. They can cry. They can laugh just based on sign language. This is why the Word of God is so important. It shows us the way. It teaches us the way. If you have an ear for the Spirit, God will lead you and guide you. Look into the light and you will see the perfect law of liberty, Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a wonderful, spirit-filled day. Amen.